All right, so let's take a look at the example questions here. Our first uh, question asks us to prove the opposite sides theorem converse, which means, of course, that if we have a figure that has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel, that the figure is a parallelogram. So what we know here is that, uh, based on the information we're given, that side AB, which is up here across the top, is congruent with, and I'm going to do these in different colors because I'm going to sort of block out the areas here, is congruent with DC down here on the bottom, and that AD on the left is congruent to BC on the right. So that's information we're given, and we're supposed to use that information to prove that ABCD is actually a parallelogram. So let's start with our uh, givens. That's the information we just went over, and we make that our first statement, pointing out that it is given. And then we can also point out that right in the middle we have DB, which is our diagonal, and DB is going to fit as a part of two different triangles. If you take a look at the lines that I marked originally in orange, they sort of point out along with that red diagonal that ADB forms one triangle on the top left-hand side of this figure, and that uh, down on the bottom right hand side we have B C D so here here and here we have another triangle and that red line in the middle is shared by both of them so since we have a reflective uh, reflexive property of congruence we know that that DB obviously is going to be equal to itself because anything is equal to itself so that tells us now that the triangles ABD and the triangle BCD are congruent based on side 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 since we know that the right hand side is congruent with the left hand side that says the smallest side of each triangle is congruent and then the middle side is congruent with the middle side of the other triangle again part of our given information and then the hypotenuse is obviously congruent with itself because they both share the same line so now we have two triangles that we know are identical based on side 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 now we can say that angle ABD so this one up here is congruent with angle CBD CDB down here so I was thinking it's got to be on the opposite side yeah CDB down here because we have our uh, corresponding parts of congruent triangles since we know these triangles are the same obviously that same angle is going to be the same and because we've now shown that these two angles are the same, and since these two angles, here and here, are alternate interior angles, now we know that AB and DC are parallel. And since they're parallel, and we have shown that they are the same, then we can identify this figure as a parallelogram. And having done that without any specific side length measurements or angle degree measurements, we've shown that it works for any parallelogram. So if we can show that opposite sides of a figure are equal, then we've shown that the figure is a parallelogram. All right, let's take a look at example B. Example B asks us if the quadrilateral EFGH is a parallelogram and how we know. Now this is really two questions in one because there's really two EFGH parallelograms here. We have one on the left and one on the right. So we have to deal with these two figures separately. On the left here, we have one that has and 110 degree E and 110 degree G, so we have office, opposite angles that are equal, and H, which is opposite F, and those two angles are both 70, so they're also equal. So based on our alternate or our uh, opposite angles theorem, we know that this figure here is a parallelogram since it's got two pairs of opposite angles that are the same. Now this figure over here, we have a distance of 5.2 from here to here, and 5.3 from the center to G. So these two measurements from E to the center and from the center over to G are different. And also the two measurements from F to the center and from the center to H are different. So since those, those two diagonals do not cross each other at the center, in other words, they do not bisect each other, that fails that definition of a parallelogram, so this is not a parallelogram. So left-hand one is, right-hand one is not. All right, and for example C, 
we need to prove that ABCD is a parallelogram, or prove that it's not, one or the other. The easiest way to prove this is a parallelogram is to pick two opposite sides and show that they are parallel and congruent. And that's actually easier than it looks here. If we start with point A, which is at negative 1, 5, and we go to point B, which is at 3, 3, then we have to go over 1, 2, 3, 4 points. So we're going to run 4, and we're going to rise a negative 2. We're going to go down 2. So we go negative 2 and 4 to get from point to point. Then if we go down here to D, we start at negative 2, I'm sorry, 2, negative 2, and we go to 6, negative 4. So this one we also go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 2. So this one also is a rise of negative 2 and a run of 4. Now I could simplify both of those to negative 1 half and negative 1 half since they're both the same and we get our slopes being the same. So since the slopes are the same, slopes are equal, we know that they're parallel. Lines are parallel. And since I actually went from one endpoint to the other on both of those lines, and I traveled exactly the same horizontal and vertical distance, those two lines are the same length as well. So since we know they're the same length, now we know that they're congruent and parallel. So since the lines are parallel and the lines are congruent, we know that this is indeed a parallelogram. That's all there is to that one.